Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. That's funny. It even says mute up here. What the? F All right. Okay. This thing looks slick, but there's obviously some some issues. Right. Okay. So, um, first order of business is that Friday's meeting has changed to 30 minutes earlier, so that we're consistent with the time of today's meeting. But Oh, sorry. Um, and then the uh, second order of business is what pull request got merged. Uh, let's see. I thought I closed this. Nope, I forgot to close this. Okay, I don't know if we... Okay, yeah, somebody fixed, um... Oh yeah, somebody fixed this, this issue. It's at JavaScript. Um... That's it. Okay, not much, not much to talk about. Um, well, there was a lot of activity in the Getter channel all over the weekend. Um, so... How is, I think I'm all caught up on everyone, on how everyone's doing, but do you guys want to just give me uh, brief updates of, of what, you're, what you're up to and uh, how things have been? Hello. Yeah. Hey, I think I heard Hamachu first. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll tell. Uh, so I'm working on that TensorFlow thing. So TensorFlow 2.2. Uh, that okay. I'm to see what's going on there. There's something weird going on. Yeah, so I'm checking that out. Great. Yeah, let's figure that out. Okay, thanks. Thanks for doing that. That one I want to get done before the next release here, obviously, because it would be great if we have the release version compatible with TF2.2. Um, okay, great. All right. Good job opening that issue. Yeah. Um, Sweet. Okay. Yeah. That that's the top priority, I think, from your end of things is making sure that that <laughs> that gets fixed. Um, oh, and yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. And then I, I think I believe it's just an issue with the config parsing that that uh, TensorFlow config parse yeah. stuff. That's kind of like the NumPy config parse stuff. Um, so we may just need to sort of fake it till we make it or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, obviously try to find the root cause. We can't yeah. if they can't tweak one config option, it's not the end of the world. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, there is something there is something wrong with the inspect inspect uh, that we that we do to get take out the init things. So okay. there is some problem with that. I'm checking that out. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah. cool. Um This looks great. Let's see. Oops, god damn it, click the wrong tab. Have you guys seen um, the, uh, the uh, let me just show you guys here. Issue list. They got this GitHub CLI command now. Well, they have uh, they had they had one before, um, but it was based on Ruby, and now this one's based on Go, and they provide you pre-compiled binaries and stuff, and it's a little bit snazzier, although not as fully yeah. featured yet. I, yeah, yeah, I was checking this out today. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. They're getting lots of issues from me. <laughs> uh, I noticed that they weren't they aren't creating bugs with the little labels when we choose the template correctly, but then they added the thing to create the labels and. I don't know, it didn't seem to work for me yet, but I'm, I'm hoping we can get the whole workflow. I'd like, if I could get the whole workflow in the terminal here, I'd be I'd be responding to issues much faster and things. Okay, so, uh, and then, yeah, so, Agen, how's it going with you? Or, well, I guess, Agen, we should probably hit you last here, and then we'll go and review your yeah, thing. Yeah, so, Sakasham, how's it going with you? Uh, I tried to solve the issue for the new syntax. But the thing is that uh, I tried it like I tried a new approach, like something like if there's a seed, 
and we are giving it for a, li a list of four like years expertise and everything so i tried it doing it like seed dot years seed dot expertise but that didn't work either and and then in the and then in the memory dot file there are many things going on and there's a lot of to do's there too so, yes there are a lot of to do's there um so actually that's a good thing well hey let's make it with the where's that uh where did i get this from let me just uh let me just redo this guy um yeah so i got i got the the values into edit feature operation uh -huh. but the thing is then then i can't use the associate definition operation because the definition of those values are then changed to the in uh, the input definition of the operation feature data uh can you say that again uh, they, uh like i have created the edit feature operation right yeah so it has it has its input and outputs definition uh -huh. so the definition of the value i change gets uh, is then uh, when the value uh, reaches edit feature operation the definition of the value is then uh, like the list value it's a list value so it's not years oh it's it's okay it's you're saying that the definition ends up becoming the whole list like the name is set to the whole list okay yeah yeah so well and that's the thing is basically we're going to need to figure out um uh how do we do this um so let's see let's see um yeah um and i don't think we need the config class here i was just trying that out yeah yeah i don't think we need the config class yeah um okay um yeah so there's there's the two ways we could do this right there's like what we tried just to recap right so there's um Let me just make some notes real quick. So work in progress on the TF 2.2 issues. Um, um, uh, working on... In memory.py when we create the parameters, right? Yeah. The parameter. Yeah, and the when we create the parameter set. Uh, yes. So it takes a key and a value. And and uh and the definition too. So that definition is, the definition of the inputs operation in uh edit feature inputs definition, and not the years, one, or the expertise one which we want, so that the associate definition operation can work. Okay, let me just close all this stuff. Okay. Um. All right. All right, so, sorry, can you point out where this is so that we can just go look at it right now? Uh, um, I think it's around gather line 500. Or something. Yes, gather inputs. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. So, and the main problem here is that, okay, condition source. Okay. And this is where we're seeing like that wacky behavior. Why, you know, if it's, um, so this, this if statement right here, and my highlighting is off on my, 
Okay, but this if statement right here, um, you can see like if ins is instance condition source dict versus else. Um, so if it is a dict, you're going to go through and, and add the, uh, we we add like the, the um, those, those dictionaries that are basically just like a little pair um, of the operation instance name and then the output that it's supposed to come through. So that's here. And this is the sources. So we probably need another one here, and hey, this John, is, uh, yeah. Naeem is asking to join, uh, like, do you have to oh. accept this? Let's see, thank you. Uh, Naeem just texted. All right, great, <laughs> thanks, guys. Nice. Sorry, I have no crap. Oh. Okay, I'm, uh, yeah, okay. All right, great, I had to jump on my phone there and do that, because I need to figure out how to set up the, uh, set up the thing such that uh, it lets everybody in, but I haven't been able to figure that out. Um, so we're talking about right now, um, Saksham is working on the data flow based, based preprocessing source, which is also going to be the thing that like, lets us... So basically, that's, that's uh, just just so to recap, this is the thing that's going to let us like modify features within a record on the fly using a data flow. Um, and then this is also the thing that's going to let us like save, like if we need to modify everything in a data flow or everything in a source, we could just, uh, like if we needed to, if you needed to edit some data set that you had, you could use a data flow to edit it using this. Um, all right. Uh, so thanks for, uh, letting me know. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, All right, so this is for the conditions. So we need to find where is okay here uh, for item and by origin. Okay, but this is all conditions. Um, so if condition source dict. Okay, but what is actually going to be the thing here? Because if we have what issue is the one that we were talking about with this. Uh, I think it's six zero seven. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, did you guys hear me blow my nose? No. All right, I'm great. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm working on the mute key with this new meat. I'm all stuffed up, so sorry if you do. All right, okay. So right now we've got, okay, feature and then seed. Um... And let's look at another example. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, usually we just got seed, and so right now, like seed is the one index in it. Okay, but now what we're gonna have is we're gonna, gonna end up under the same if statement where we've got a dict so it's going to be yes on the is instance the element is a dict so we're in here but now we just need to check um we need to check that there's only one oh we need to check that this is a instance of a list um and then that's this condition that we're doing right here so if condition source um uh, let's see we'll have to check if the value of that key is a list yeah yeah so because the syntax uh, i wrote in the flow for the de test data flow is uh, features and then in in a list there will be a seed as key and seed as key in that uh, dict of the list yeah and for uh, the list of four uh, features. Yeah, that sounds that sounds correct. Yeah, 
I'm just wondering too, like, I think at some point I'm, we made this a list and then just have every index be uh, a pair. And I guess that was just so that you don't end up clobbering things, but you're never kind of going to end up clobbering things. Cause everything has to have a unique instance name key. So this may, we may not have even needed a list there. So let's just sort of like, uh, it might be something that we want to fix. It might not. Let's see, value seed, like we would have seed true. I can create true. It's not really as explicit. I think the reason why it was done this way is because this is explicit, like it's from an origin, because that can't have like some sort of source within it. And this is sort of explicit, as in um, it's uh, the output of something else. All right. Okay, so condition source. Um, uh, Sudhanshu wants to join uh, thank you. the meeting. Right, okay, so concision source, sorry, we're still figuring out the meat thing. Well, it's still figuring out. It has not been figured out yet. Um, okay, so this is the condition that we care about. So this is the case where um, the, and let's just copy this over. Um, Oops. I'm just curious, what are, how many people actually use Vim other than me on this? Does everybody use like VS Code or? I do use a bit, but. But uh, it's a bit complicated to sometimes. So wait. Pycharm it, makes it. Hmm. Pycharm and Himachu, did you say VS Code or what did you say? No, I I use, I use it sometimes. Oh, you but, do? Uh, not that much. Yeah, I do. All right. Interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like a, it's handy sometimes, but not always for me. Yeah, it's like it's like it definitely got this sort of. Uh, it's definitely got this, like, I'm not sure if it's always faster sometimes. <laughs> and then, Sudarsana, you said you use PyCharm. Does anybody else use PyCharm? I know that's a popular one. Yeah, I hate Vim. I mostly use VS Code. VS Code. Yeah, I know. That's sort of, like, won the market these days. So, in this case... We're just going to go through now. Yes, VS Code is easy and you can find stuff easily. Yeah. Faster. Yeah, I have a friend who does some kernel development, primarily kernel development. And uh, he basically, um, he, um, yeah, I have a friend who does kernel development and, and he, like, has his VS Code set up really nicely, and he can fly around the whole kernel. Um, and yeah, I just like I don't know. I just there's some like I got used to the keys. You know, you use the H J K L keys to move around, and now it's like I can't use another editor because like I'm just like it's, uh, I just can't do it. Um, all right, so this is basically what we'll end up with here for this for this case. Um, so we've got seed, and then the the we looked at the value and the first index of the value because there's always going to be only one index. And uh, if it's a list, then we go through um, the origin and we append the origins. Um, if it's not, um, well, I suppose we should probably just do this okay but then in this case let's see origin set append okay well that's supposed to be a tuple there 
Okay, and so we're going to make it, we need to say like, what is origins in this case? Origins is key value. Okay, so this is actually also a problem because right now it just says like you're allowed to get matching definitions from here. It doesn't say, um, let's see, it doesn't say, um, okay, is this inputs? It doesn't say you're allowed to override this definition. So, and let's actually go into the inputs so we're not screwing around in the... Let's, let's not screw around in the uh, in the condition stuff if we don't have to here. Okay. Um, so... Like I told you, I tried it like... Uh, making all, every everyone's origin every uh, input's origin different like seed dot years and seed dot expertise and everything yeah i got it i got it to work like that but that will that, work then yeah the, then the main issue is that uh, associate definition doesn't get the years definition for year value and expertise definition for expertise value yeah it comes from wait why why doesn't that work because it goes through first edit feature operation. So it takes the definition of output, I guess. I was get I was getting uh, oh, oh. definition. Is it because it's probably because of this? Because it sets the definition to whatever the Yes, I was talking yeah. about this only. It's the parameter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we probably need we probably need to make it so that um, item dot value. I mean, this could just be set to item dot definition. Uh, the thing is, I tried uh, changing it to item dot definition. It still this uh, it still gives the same definition. Hmm. That's interesting. All right, I'll try to look into this because um, I think that this might. If we keep looking at this, it might take up all our time. So this code in here is is it's it's uh it's a it's a bit of a mess. Um, That's what happened over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, now 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 we're all on the same page. <laughs> Uh, we were on the same page before that this was going to be a mess, but now now we definitely are. All right, so let me just uh, fighting with memory py and getting the um, let's see, and getting the uh, issue six zero seven for. PR604 working. All right, and I, I need to look at this. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, and yeah, 604 is the correct corresponding issue. All right. Um, sweet. Um, and then, Agen, we're still going to do you last. Um, let's see. Uh, so, um, um, uh, Sudhanshu, um, this guy, um, I think we just need a test on this. Um, yes, yeah. And then it'll be good to go. This looks good. Um, I think even when we do the test, we probably just want something like... Uh, I think I actually added it to the thing. Probably something like... Uh, you know, you basically just define an operation and then create an input sort of like you would create an input um, like this. Um, so when we did this, I think we did this last week, um, but we did this where we went through and we, we defined definitions with specs and subspecs yes, and yes, stuff. Yes. And so, yeah, so yes. if, you, if you just sort of have, a, have an example where you create the operation, which creates the definition, and then create the input and show that it works, then that should be good. 
Um, yeah. It, so uh, one more thing I had to ask, like, yeah. yeah. So actually, you uh, you commented on that uh, pull request uh, about creating like an if statement. So I was not sure what to do with it. Um. In the if, pull request, that same pull request. Oh, I think you. I think you got that actually. Yeah, that comment. Yes, this is correct. This is what I meant here. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. And so then, um, and then basically when you do the subspec stuff, you're just gonna have a if statement within this body. So let me just put a comment here now. So when you implement the same thing, but subspec. Uh, you'll just do, just, you'll have an if statement in here where you check if, um, and now I believe, um, uh, typing, uh, get origin. All right, so this is new in 3.8, but I think we implemented it somewhere. Um, do we not implement it anyway? Some, somewhere implements this. Where implements this? Um... Nope. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, get origin. What? What? The, what is it? How did that not work? Oh, by origin. Ah, eh, I was grabbing for the wrong thing. God damn, that's why it didn't work. All right, so basically, um, use this uh, git origin function, um, and uh, and I think it, it looks like it's in base py, and you might have to move it. Um, so let's see. So if you have a statement where you check uh, if the origin origin use uh, typing dot get origin also in base dot py but you should probably move it to util um, data or something um, uh, check if um, so if origin is typing uh, dot that list. Okay, well, what did we do here with this example? Okay, so primitive array spec equals person spec of subspec. All right, yeah, so we'll want to implement this. Uh, you'll just want to set primitive to array or primitive to map based on... Uh, based on the, uh, the origin there. So it'll be typing dot list. Then set to primitive dot set primitive to array. Otherwise set it to map if dict. Uh, if it's neither of those of oop, either of those then um, okay, you have to check the origin, actually, okay, so it's not actually going to be within the if statement, because your param.annotation will have an origin, um, so let's see, when you implement something, you need, you need an if statement after the one added, uh, where you check if origin, origin, if origin, 
is typing dot less then set primitive to way other one set to map if dict then fall through to the last case um, so uh, you'll still want want to have the uh, this the logic you added in this if statement um, to see if um, it's a or to validate that the list slash dict has a inner type which is a um, uh, name tuple or data class and so now at this point like and then you're also going to want to so you'll also want want to modify the code in uh, input dot init so that it um, so that it uh, uh, throws so that it checks what its primitive is and throws an error if it doesn't if the data type passed isn't the right you know right uh, list or dict or uh, type so if it's not a uh, list or dict rather than just checking the current behavior which just checks if the value is the correct data type so you're going to want to validate the value is the correct data type before on marshalling basically into the into that structure does that make sense uh, yes, yes yes this is going to be really sweet because now it's like you know you just write a function you put op on it and then all of a sudden you get your data types converted into the correct things and it's all validated that'll be really nice um so let's uh, see sure. yeah all right and then the next thing obviously after that you probably want to do the definition stuff uh, or the output i mean that result this will be really great i hope hopefully yes, we can yes. get this into the next release um yes so. yes awesome thank you oh and i need to just thank you thank you of course of course uh, let's see yeah we have a lot of cool stuff going on here let's see okay so let's see anybody else that's on the call that had something that they wanted to let's see who else do we have on here um yeah hi john this is name speaking hey naeem how's it going yeah good uh could you open the features.py file? There's a function. Yes. There. Okay, so yeah, this might be uh yeah, okay. Yeah, my my question is uh, are we going to keep the load and the the float functions or we are going to remove them? Uh okay, so um so with well so with you don't need load actually um, but actually yeah I guess we might not need these anymore so the reason why we had these was because like with everything else with DFML you have like you know the plugin and then the config for the plugin well features were like a very early concept that was like sort of how things worked like way before everything else worked the way it does now um, and so they mm -hmm have not quite been like you know instead of taking a config they, they don't take a can do they even take a config i'm not even sure if they do um if they do they don't use it um yeah and uh and so you you could define features and stuff and and then you would load them and they would actually generate the the, the data that this produced lots of problems um so the so yeah we probably don't need um we probably don't need load or load def. You're just going to have to make it so that, actually, let's see. 
it will probably you probably need to make it so that um, if what feature gets let's see because we'll have to look at this flow here so bam, dfml util cli commands um, so right now command.py so right now what happens is we have this thing called uh, uh, we have this parse where is it no it's in dfml base uh, parse yeah parse expand action it's a, mm -hmm. it's yeah a line 166 where this happens yeah okay yeah yeah so um type class value yeah okay so type class is coming from arg type um okay so yeah it converts each yeah so the first thing it does it, is it converts each element into that and then it calls this action which is the parse expand action and so now basically each value it's basically going to say like okay each value is a list and i'm going to convert it into the list class which is the features list class here um and i'm not even sure if we need features anymore at this point um we probably don't even need features anymore if you do once you do this but that's like going to be it let's leave it for now and then do it okay. later um but yeah i don't think we'll need features either which is going to simplify a lot of things um because features was was uh meant to you know uh basically manage it was kind of like the it was kind of like the old orchestrator um and so yeah we probably won't even need it at this point we might need it for exporting the features um no, we may not even need it for exporting the features, but we'll 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 deal with that one next then. Um, so let's just okay. create an issue for that. So ch issue create. We're just talking about the new command line client here. Um, so feature clean up features remove features class. Um, so after and then. Okay. Uh, what issue was this? Uh, three hundred three. Three hundred three. Okay. Mm. After three hundred three, we'll want to look at removing. Moving the features class. Um, this will probably be a heavy lift. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of changes involved with this. There's probably going to be a lot of changes involved in this. Um, none of them should be too too bad uh luckily but uh maybe the http api will be funny but uh yeah uh, there's probably gonna be some utility level we might we might we might want we probably want to make sure do you know what uh uh let's see Make sure is the unifying of the CLI configuration is done first, because um, that'll probably we're probably going to run into a bunch of things where there's like features, and now we're just going to have list feature. Um, mm -hmm. We'll go from features. This is going to be great too. This is going to improve readability a lot, I think. Um, because when you go like and you're on the let's see add metadata I tried this last time it did not want to do it for me space to select type to filter okay um, alright uh, let's see um, what do we want this is uh, 
and aha there we go now it's working okay enhancement and kind ml and this is a high priority um, and this is definitely at least a medium it's probably a big one all right all right okay um and then okay so let me just wait what we so wish sutantra we talked about talked about the um 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 subspec uh, spec yeah subspec and uh, writing the tests for it and uh, okay uh, there's one more thing uh, we talked about like validating on the input side. Once you once you do subspec, yeah. you'll want to validate on the input yeah. side. Right, yeah, uh, and how once? Thank you. Do subspec will want to add extra addition on the input side. Um, like modify the init function. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then also, you know, one of the things since the unit test run is the doc test or the, the doc test run within the unit test, you could uh, just add the um, example usage or could just add, could just make the test be... Um, Actually, I'm, I haven't even checked if this affects the coverage. It may or it may not. We'll see. Um, it should. Hopefully, I hope it does. Um, it could just add to just make the test be. Well, okay, it's, the sentence is all wrong. Should just make the you could just make the test be within the example in the doc string of uh, op. Um, cause that way it would be documented there too. Um, or you could just write yes, the test case. Yes, it yes. might just be faster to just write the test case, but it'd be good to have it there too. All yes. right, sweet. And then, so thank you. Naeem. And then now we're talking about, um, uh, changing def feature to feature, uh, um, eventually after this we'll want to remove features um, right now we'll want to remove uh, load and load def um, so this will result in the need to um, you're probably going to need okay so so you're probably going to need I guess the, the only thing you'll need here is that if you have this as a data class, okay, so, oof, yeah, okay. Um, well, actually, this could work fine, because right now we've got the default dtype to int, and then the length is one, and basically you're going to have this data class where it's name, dtype, length. And so mm -hmm. if you, and, and if we still keep defaults on dtype and length, which is probably the right thing to do, then if you get the name and the name has a colon in it within post in it, I think we can do mm -hmm. post in it. So yeah, so if you get the name, oh, uh, where did everything go? All right, okay. So this was a need to parse the colon separated um, name, D type, uh, length, string. Um, keep keep defaults on the um, keep defaults on the um, uh, yeah D type and length and then in post in it uh, in post in it uh, have it to the same kind of parsing that load def does um, on the name. Uh, 
because yeah, that'll be basically as if we keep keeping the same whole command line stuff that happens, it'll just end up passing that through as the name, and then you just parse the name to find the dtype and the length, and then now all of a sudden you've got everything that you would have had before. So right. th that should be the way to go there. Um, anything else on this one? Uh, yeah, just uh, you you showed in the code the features, but we are going to remove that. I will yeah. probably add in it to the features or at the data class, right? Uh, sorry, what? Uh, so you mentioned the def init fe uh, function, but that that one is in the def feature class. This guy. We are going to remove the def yeah. feature class. Uh, the the above that, yeah. Uh, yeah, defined feature. Okay, f defined feature. Yeah, defined feature. Basically, this just uh, uh, this was like. Let's see. Let's look at what it was before log Um, so this is what it looked like before. Here was you had. Uh, well, yeah, you had def feature. The function just had the class definition within it, and then it just returned this new class, an instance of this new class. Um, mm -hmm. And this is just another, I basically, I, I changed it not that long ago to this way because it's sort of, I guess it's less readable, quite honestly, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. I thought it might be more readable, but now I'm realizing it's less readable. But it doesn't matter because you're going to get rid of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's doing the same thing where it's just setting those properties and stuff. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, yeah, you're going to, you're going to just, just, yeah, just keep, keep, uh, keep, keep these, but, you know, within the data class, um, rather than within the init method here. Um, and mm -hmm. then, and then put, just put name stir and that way er, it, the data class will require a name to be instantiated. And then you can put okay. in the post init that, that parsing logic. And I think that parsing logic is just going to be, uh, yeah, it's basically this and then, yeah, well, so this and then convert dtype. So you're going to keep convert dtype. You're going to basically be like, okay, if there's colons, then split it. Name equals the first thing. Dtype equals the second thing. And then length equals the third team. And then convert convert dtype. Um, oh, and convert length to an int, obviously. Or I guess you'll probably want to do, you probably want to add, while you're at it, if you could add the more fancy parsing around length to do, uh, I think we want to do uh, for, so let's see. Uh, so you'll split, the, okay, so keep the pulse, uh, have that same kind of parsing load does uh, for length uh, parse using uh, uh, da, 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 Diff mal util uh, data parser helper diff mal dot util dot data dot parser helper um, so that we can pass uh, arrays events lists events lists arrays lists uh, okay yeah. Um, since we can't do this right now. Uh, okay. Does that all, um, uh, does, is this all good enough for you to go on right now? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks. All right, cool. Um, and then I think... Do we have Sudarsana? I think you might be the only one who haven't said anything other than uh, other than uh, Agan at this point. Did you have anything you wanted to add before we jump into that? Um, um, no, John. But I I just had a question about one of the issues. Uh, issue five nine six. I don't know if I can take it up or not. But could you please explain? Let's see. Oh yes. Okay. So, um. So this is something that, uh, so like you guys are familiar with, Yash is working on um, should I and uh, and making, should I like do some, some you know, we can launch subplots and, and do all these operations he's been working on so that we can sort of evaluate any, any package in any language. Um, so this is actually sort of adjacent to something that I was working on yesterday. I should have thrown it in here. Um, 
So the idea behind this is we're going to create a dependency tree for a project. Um, and uh, and this is a very pro this is a very very difficult and annoying problem in in in, in software security. Um, basically, like so. So a, de a dependency is anything that you that that you import, right? And so if you guys you guys have, have noticed how I'm I'm very stingy about how we're, we're, we can't import any third party dependencies within the main library. Um, that is actually it's 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 for many reasons, but um, uh, the main one is that it makes my life easier on the process side of things. Um, and then second to that is the reason why it makes my life easier on the process side of things is because the more dependency you have, the more possible vulnerabilities that you have. Um, uh, because, you know, if somebody's piece of software gets vulnerability in it and you don't update, now you have that vulnerability. And so now if you have software, if your package depends on one package that depends on three packages that each depend on three packages, now all of a sudden you've got like, uh, uh, it's like 12 dependencies, I think, total or something. Um, and so that's basically your tree is like, uh, well, let's see. Well, the problem here is I don't have a tree I can show you. That's basically this issue. Um, so let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this right now. So there's this branch here. Um, and maybe I should just take this and make this a branch on the on the main one, so you can actually work off the main one. Um, uh, get check out. Should I dev tree? Good log. Oops. All right. Um, so what's going on here is, all right, all right. So here's a good place for you to start. Is basically if you go in here, let me push this to the main thing. Uh, so get push. I. Uh, Um, okay, it looks like we had get multi in here. Oh, yeah, get multi was in here. That's right. Um, okay. sorry. All right. I got two should I trees going on, but whatever. Okay, so let's see. Now this should be up to date, and we'll just go. And then you can submit pull requests to this branch. Um, so the deal here is that the main thing we're working on right now, so so we've got some code. Um, where is that? Um, um, examples, should I test, test dependency tree? All right, so in this example, should I test test step tree file? What we have is a few operations that we combine with the other operations that we have. And this one, for example, basically right now, all they do is they open the setup.py file and they read out what is in the install requires line. We also need to figure out how to read things from setup.config or setup.config and, and requirements.txt. Um, so basically what, and then it goes through and, and it, uh, it downloads, so it uses the PyPy package JSON operation, which is in should I, which basically what that does is it, uh, it I think it uses the, yeah, it uses the contents and the package JSON. So basically you put in a package name of a Python package, it goes and it says, okay, download the Python package. 
now extract the Python package, and then this operation, the operation up here, this reads the setup.py and figures out what is in the install requires section. Um, and now, uh, and then, and then what it does is is uh, it just outputs those packages, um, and it it um, and then it goes and runs the same thing on them, right? So it's just going to do this until it can't find any more dependencies. And at the end, um, you're going to get um, this. Is, so this is the main thing that's 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 wonky right now is vim. So, so at the end of this, right, you, you started with one package and then you found another package and then within that package, you found more packages, right? So you, you have this tree, right? Um, and so what we need to do right now is the main thing that's wrong in here at the moment is we need to create this operation, which is an output operation, which is the tree output operation. Um, and so you'll want to go through like what's going on here is basically we're looking at um, uh, we need to make a dictionary where it's kind of like the um, we need to make a dictionary that is like um, this is we're almost done here and then we'll we'll run through Augen's thing um, so. We need to make a dictionary that's kind of like how we have the um, plugin um, and the configuration stuff. So we say the plugin name is whatever it is, and then the config name, or and then the config is whatever the config is, right? So what we're going to do is we have. I think the current way it works right now is it actually like is configurable. Um, so you can say I think yeah this tree spec. So you pass in the definition that you want. Uh, you pass in what you want the value to be called, and then you want the you pass in what you want the um, uh, the sub values to be called. So value ends up being like what do you want plugin to be called. So if I put plugin in for value in the spec, then I'm going to get plugin, and then this is like whatever the top package is, right? And then if I put uh, uh, config in for subs, then this this key here becomes config, right? So what we do in here, I think, is call it, um, what do we call it, what do we call it? Um, okay, so value is found and subs is under, right? So you're gonna end up with something that's like, um, uh, oops, um, so, wait, where the hell am I? Uh, okay, um, so you're gonna end up with something like, um, so found, uh, DFF or let's see, DFML model scikit or yeah. Um, and then subs and then it'll say, it'll be like, uh, found or what is it? No, it's, uh, is it a list? I think it might be a list. Anyways, that's sort of what's going on right now is you got to build this thing. And that's what all this code here is in this output operation is you got to figure out how to build this thing. Um, and you have all the information you need uh, within the parent parameters of the operation. Uh, if, if you look at, you, you'll you get the inputs. Um, so if you say like uh, this guy as output definitions. Um, so, and then you say, okay, give me all the inputs uh, that were in give so this ictx is the input uh network so basically like everything that that got produced as a result of the data flow is in this ictx and so when you say ictx definitions you're saying okay give me everything uh that got produced that matches the, this definition and so then you go through every every input in in that matching in that matches that definition in this loop here um and you, the first thing we did was check like, okay, does this thing have no parents, right? Like, um, is this the top one, right? So is this DFFML model scikit, if that's the first one that we started with? And then uh, we go through and we say, okay, it looks like we made it a list, right? So then we're gonna have list where each list is like, okay, found, and found is DFF, or found is sci sklearn, um, and then 
subs is like uh what is that job lib is one of those or well wait subs is a list and i think one of scikit's dependencies is like job lib so it'd be found uh job lib um and then subs is uh, I don't know what the syntax for an empty list is in YAML, but it's whatever that is. Um, so this sort of gives you, does this give you, and then like, for example, if there was another dependency, like I think we also depend on NumPy, um, we would have NumPy, right? So this is the structure that we're building here. Um, because we'll, we'll, and then we could visually display this as a tree, right? Um, but that's the main thing that needs to be done in here right now is fix this tree operation. Um, and then once you do that, you'll be able to, then you need to just, the next step is read the requirements.txt file. And then after that, um, read the setup config file and, and be able to grab stuff from there. Cause right now we only know how to grab stuff from setup.py. So just fill out those operations and figure out how to parse those files. Um, and then finally, after that, uh, stop throwing away the version information because right now we throw away the version information and then we want to be able to maintain that version information. Um, so that's it's a large thing um, if you want to take that on. But I think that, yeah, it's definitely doable. It's just sort of you got to, you know, chip away at it. Right, okay. Uh, I will go take a look at the links that you have shared and uh, try to understand. Now that, now that I have an idea of what it is about, I think I'll be able to understand the issue better. And then uh, I will take it out. All right, great. Um, we'll be working on and and hopefully we'll, it looks like yes, we have a recording of this meeting, so that's good. <laughs> uh, the other day I forgot, so let's see. What we'll, we'll be working on. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, so should I should I dep tree? Yeah, and I'm I'm doing some work, so I'm doing some work that's adjacent to this right now, where um, the problem is like this works fine for Python, but then you get into other projects where, and what the idea, the nice part about this is now we can do auto discovery. So with should I, you can you can do a lot of things where you assess and run other tools, right? And that's kind of what we're doing there. But with this, it's kind of like we're going to have this with with the depth tree command, we'll be able to do. Um, very like we'll be able to do analysis of basically any project and say um, the same type of thing where we're doing analysis of any project running different scanners and this is like specifically from a dependency thing so this is might be something that we like actually use in the other one eventually um, but with this like with this information you can do things like uh, figure out like what are all the CVEs that are in there. This is the same. It's basically the same kind of thing that safety does. Um, but I think Rahul, one of the other mentors who I was telling Naeem, I haven't I haven't seen him around for a while. Um, but uh, he was supposed to be he was supposed to be around, but I don't know what happened. I think he'll he'll probably come back pretty soon here. Um, it's hard to keep track of everybody when uh, you know we're not in the office anymore. Um, but. He wanted to do some kind of machine learning base. He called it a SAT solver. I'm not too familiar with what that is, but you could do a SAT solver on all these. And basically, you know, because you have this giant dependency tree of projects, and then you want to figure out, well, okay, some of those have vulnerabilities, but some of them have version numbers that are, they can say, I can only be within this version range, like kind of like what happened with our TF 2.2 situation. Um, we can't install TensorFlow 2.2 right now because there's some issue. So we went and as a temporary fix, we're throwing a version specifier on there, which says, give me TensorFlow TensorFlow 2.0.0, at least TensorFlow 2.0, but something less than TensorFlow 2.2. Um, and so as various projects, like if you were depending on DFFML and then depending on something else, and now you've got like a bunch of projects and they all have like different version ranges of TensorFlow that they depend on, and now TensorFlow gets a vulnerability, you want to figure out, okay, what is the maximum version of TensorFlow that I can upgrade them all to? Um, and that's what this thing was would do that, that he was trying to figure out. Um, and so that's, that's why this is very important. Um, so, because or else... You, you end up with vulnerabilities in your software and everything is is, is a burning, flaming mess. Um, so, uh, 
And speaking of deploying things continuously, um, sort of, if that's what you read into that, which is what I read into that, is we need to be able to constantly update everything and deploy them continuously. Let's check out how we deploy data flows continuously. Um, so. That's um, something like a transition to a YouTube <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thanks. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, I was thinking we need to make some YouTube videos because uh, I've, I've heard that it would be it would be probably nice to have something that's kind of like a little short intro to what the hell is DFFML rather than like the giant talk that I gave. It's like 20 minutes. It's like just it's probably too much. Um, get, yeah, you uh, you explained to me uh, uh, two weeks ago how Dataflow stuff works. I saw that video again uh, to see something and there was a, a comment uh, someone saying loved it. Oh, oh, no way. Sweet. All right. Hey, well, let's, uh, maybe we should crop that out then. Maybe I'll go back and look at that and crop that out and, and add that. Because I think we do have a few things just from the weekly sync meetings where, um, uh, where we could crop stuff out that we've talked about and then make little videos stuff out like of it. And two points. Yeah, exactly. Experience. Yeah, that would be good, good, good idea. Well, yeah, maybe if you, could you send me, just say in Gitter or in, uh, Let's, or actually, oh, yeah, let me just put that in the meeting. Yeah, okay, so let's say, let me just put this here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, make some smaller videos instead of these giant hour long <laughs> meetings so people don't have to watch these. Okay, so possible targets. Targets. Um, snip parts out of weekly syncs uh, where we talked about um, entry points data flows etc okay so if you could like make a if you could make like a comment with the link on the on the meeting minutes doc and I'll paste it in here um, I've, I've sent the link on uh, in this chat meeting okay. chat Great. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, and which one was this? Data flows or entry points? It was data flows. You were explaining data flows okay. to me. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. Okay, and then we'll try to find entry points too. All right. All right. Now let's get back to back to business here. So, check out Tucker Cook. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, I've been doing polls recently and like, am amazed at how many changes we end up with. Um, it's always really cool when you do a poll and you just see this massive tree of changes. Let's see. Um, so, Let's just do, and what machine am I on? Okay. Okay, it looks like, yeah, I was wondering about that. So those images, did you add those images, Agen? Did I lose everybody? Where are you guys? Oh, sorry, my oh. mic was muted. Okay, no worries. I, um, I, 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 I don't see my display. Let's see. So, oops, use cases. Okay, so then this is the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, let's um, let's actually move this automating classification and data flow HTTP deployment to the back of this list. Uh, um, Because like these are the ones that I wrote a while ago, and they're just like not very clear as much as these other three are now. So okay, so uh, deploy on deployment with HTTP service. In this tutorial we will deploy a data flow which converts a video to a GIF or HTTP service. We'll also see how to deploy the same Docker container. Finally, in the serving data flow, we'll serve up set up the HTTP service which on GitLab 
GitHub webhooks and redeploy the data flow. Okay, and we've got the link to the example directory, um, which will be the correct link. Okay, great. All right, so now we got to create ourselves some operations. Um, let's see. Um, oops. So, tempty. All right, CDFFmpeg. And let's just go through these and make sure they all, oops. Make sure everything is there. Yeah, okay. I pushed, pushed the so. All right, great, thanks. Um, yeah, they were being ignored by the Yeah, that's right, I figured. Okay. Um, say FFmpeg operations okay and then we need to add to our entry point here Oops. okay Oops. set up common okay Oh, you won't have the definitions now. Oh, okay. So that's something we need to do. Let's let's just scrap that definitions file then. So let's just put it all in here. Okay, okay. Um, okay. And actually, let's see. What are those definitions? We may not even need to define them if we have the uh, if we have the type annotations. Um, so, or let's actually, let's keep them. Um, all right, yeah, so we'll want, want these guys. So let's just do FFmpeg, um, vim FFmpeg operations. So I'll just send you a diff of this when we're done here. Um, okay. Yeah, we can just define them all in line here. Or let's see, that's bytes, that's int. Actually, we don't. We can even just do. Uh, well, okay, that's gonna screw things up. Um, Cause, yeah, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this for now. Um, okay, and we can do. We should do that. Um, So, da, da, da. okay, looks good, looks good. Um, okay, and then refresh the page here. Okay. Um, oh, and I need to put that guy into documents, Python, diff, all examples, so I can send you the diff appropriately. Fempeg operations. Remove the definitions file. Okay. Um, okay, and now we pip install. pip install dash e. Uh, oh, pre oh, prefix. That's what I'm doing. I knew I was doing something wrong there. Right. Okay. And, okay, so you've got the data flow here. Um, okay. So. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, this is a nice little concise file for the data file. Let's see. Um, let's see. Um, cat ffmpeg data flow. Um, data flow. Py. Um, Oh man, this is great. Okay, let's see. Okay, and then let's see. Let's just make this um, for. Uh, let's just make. Uh, let's just 
change this a little bit because I want to start. I want to start everywhere we have, and we probably need to change stuff in Scale right now. But I want to change it so that everything just imports from the top level package because that's kind of uh, you know when when people are unfamiliar with the we know where everything is finally. But I know I know it definitely took everybody else a long time to to learn where everything was imported from. Um, and so, uh, uh, and it even took me a long time, you know, I wrote, I wrote a lot of it, so, um, so, yeah, we'll start, let's try to start doing that where we, um, where we, uh, import it from there, so, Python, DF, no, examples, uh, FFmpeg, Dataflow, okay. And then let's see, yeah, good maker. All right, thank God that worked. Um, let's see. Input mode bytes, nice application architecture extreme. Actually, let's. Uh, Oh, should I add uh, like the DFO YAML service also? I don't think I have added that. Uh, uh, that should have been installed, right? Sorry, where? Uh, before the DFO Performance Service export file, was, uh, we are exporting it as YAML. So oh, yes, we need to install uh, config YAML. Good, good call. Um, so, yeah, we'll want to, we'll want to, I would say, put a little note at the top here. I think we have. Um, I think we have, uh, uh, let's see, I think we have something that, that is, let's see, all the code in this example, uh, I would say that, let's see, actually drop this, um, because they they should be able to jump up, pop open the terminal and do this anywhere um, and if they want to reference it then they'll download it um, so let's see let's see, let's see. and then let's see, dump this line here okay there's a lot that gets involved in writing these giant tutorials, huh? It's like, <laughs> there's so much work. And also, you had to do a lot of upfront work to get everything working. Um, let's see. Okay, so... Okay, so we need to add a note up here. Let's see. So, uh, let's see. Let's have them... Oh, and they need to install the HTTP service, too. Them install DFML service... HTTP and DFFML config YAML uh, after the note. Oh shit, oh shit. Uh, I always accidentally do that. Alright, okay. I've tried to stop doing this thing where I do the review comments because then I just end up forgetting to submit the review. But the control enter does that. Okay, and single comment. All right. So, and then the other thing is that um, let's see, application architect stream um, image gif. Uh, let's do. What is the right? I'm type for if let's see all right whatever oh there is a mime type of image gif uh, okay all right that's a valid type okay so we probably want to change that since it is after all a gif um, so let's see and then let's see let's 
see. Okay. And then let's jump back over here. This looks good. This looks good. Uh, we'll just need to remember to change this too. So uh, let me put that on here. Uh, yeah, so image gif. Image gif. I'm sorry, everybody. I would like everybody. It, it'd be great if everybody, if you, if you have time to stay and and see how this all works, that's great. Um, if not, I won't. I won't blame you. I know it's probably late. Um, but this is very cool. Let's see. So let's see. All right. Okay. Um, and then yeah. Okay. So we'll have them pop open. And let's make sure this docs work here. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Um, nope. Port 8080 is in use. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, let's switch the docs over, huh? All right, uh, strips. Uh, I'll just do. I can't can't do that on port 88 if I'm already in. Let's see. All right, and then do I have? Let's see. Okay. We'll see how this webhook goes. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, I'm behind a. Monkey proxy setup. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to put on debug logging just in case. Looks good. Looks good. Um, good job, security. Okay. And now, oh, we need to add, okay, example videos available here. Great. Okay. So let's see. Hey, can you try if that link's opening for you? Because I think. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah, it probably won't open because it's yeah, going to be. Course. Yeah, let's make it. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Docker uh, hook. Right. Okay. Um, Syntax. Syntax. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, we need to make sure we have the raw link here. So, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, definitely. We need to change this guy. So, tell master. Raw equals true, so let's do curl. Where am I? Okay, good. So curl as oh, oh, what is it? OSL, yeah. Okay. File. In, all right. Well, inputs before. Okay. Let's see. Uh. Do raw. What happens there? I think we can just put raw there. No, maybe we can't. Huh? Okay, we can't. Great. Uh, so, yeah, let's do that. And then, so, okay, and then we're going to do this curl command, and hopefully we end up with a GIF. 
Well, all right, something happened there. Let's see. Oh, output.gif, python-m, http.server, um, 9090. And let's go check out input.gif. Or output.gif. Output.gif. Uh oh. Do we have FFmpeg installed? Nope, we do not. Oops. Oh, maybe that's why it threw that. Yeah. Yeah, so it really... yeah, yeah, it actually threw an error. Oh, it did throw an error? Let's see. Yeah, the, the, the one that all does, of course, you have the resolution also there. So it's that large error where it shows oh. what all the inputs. Oh, are yeah, there. that's right, yeah. Well, oh, and I should have seen 500. Let's see. Um, come on. Wow. Takes a long time to install FFmpeg these days. <laughs> Got to download a whole container with it. Uh, I was explaining to my little brother. He was like, we we're trying to play... Uh, have you guys played Age of Empires? Yeah, I played a lot. Yeah, so Age of Empires, uh, we are trying to play the very first one, and uh, he's on Linux, oh. and I'm on Linux. Yeah, and so uh, so it works in Wine, and there's this thing called uh, uh, Lutris. Okay, we got to add that snap bin export. There's this thing called Lutris, and so we got it all installed in Lutris, uh, and it wasn't working for him, it, like, Lutris wasn't working on his Arch Linux install, and then, let me see, alright, FFmpeg, okay, good, alright, great, so that's installed now, okay, now let's send that curl request again, so we got it all installed, and Okay, it looks like uh, something happens here. Uh oh, okay, so it looks like we ran FFmpeg. Um, uh, but it's saying no such file or directory. Um, let's see. So, makes it temporary file after dumping the bytes. Um. Okay. Oh, I think this might have been from my comments last night. Or let's see. No, I think I might have forgot to say this. Okay, so we need to do... Let's okay, let's try this again. Usually that is... Temp slash what the hell? Why is it trying to no such file or directory? I assume that's the input file. Or wait a minute. Yeah. What else? Um. So let's see. It may be also complaining because it said something. It's got some message here about X11, but it really shouldn't care about that. Um. So let's see. Um, well, let's see, we need to, let's see, let's see, let's see, how should we do this? Um, 
Huh. <laughs> well, we have that, uh... So, input file is bytes. Resolution is... Int. Output file is bytes. Right, input file 60. Input file dot name. Name temporary file. Let's see. Can we make this like. Let's make sure it's got the right uh, contents in it. So. And let's also ffmpeg. No, x11. Let's just first see if this is the issue. It's working mine, I know you hear this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it works. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure. Um, oh, that's weird. It's probably There's because... No yeah, it's probably because... Um, it's probably because of the X11 thing. So let's see. Um, do we have a display variable in here? Uh, unset. Right, yeah, let's see if that, that helps. Maybe it's trying to do X11 stuff and it shouldn't be. No, it's still mad at us. Right, um... But it wouldn't matter though. Yeah, that shouldn't matter at all. But, you know, it might. X11 does weird stuff, so let's see. Um, okay, and let's say... Prefix... Uh, is this Python 2? No, this is Python 3. Okay. So, yeah, let's do prefix equals like something and then we'll we'll make sure that this is what's going on. And then I think there was like a delete. Yeah, delete equals false. So let's do prefix equals something and delete equals false and we'll see what the hell's in the file. Uh, prefix equals, and we should probably have a prefix anyways. From peg and delete equals. And I can't spell today. Okay. No, I didn't do that. Okay, yeah, it is prefixing it now. And it's saying no such file or directory. Well, that's that's a bunch of horse shit. Um, so let's see. Show some. That and then also input. Okay, same thing. So it's the right stuff in that file. Um, I'm wondering maybe. This is probably like a synchronization issue. So let's do. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, fsync, um, python, this is like, this is, we're probably running into a weird synchronization issue here, um, with the file system itself, um, so, um, Where's F sync? Okay. This will just tell us like if this is the problem, if we can force the flush. Um, so Okay, so this is and this is something that happens like basically it hasn't actually written the like it says it wrote it to disk, but it didn't write it to disk to the point of where like another process could come and grab it because like something within the kernel hasn't like flush the caches, I think. I can't remember. But basically, That's if we call this... Yeah, like this. yeah, this, well, yeah, well, welcome to the world of funky operating system interaction hell. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. This is 
quite likely the, the issue here. We'll see what happens. Nope, no such file or directory. Okay, so why don't you think that exists? Um, BIM FFmpeg operations. Thanks, boo. Um, okay, let's see. What the fuck? Okay. Um, STD out, subprof spot pipe. Um, okay. No such file or directory. Suffix equals. Okay, but this is ridiculous. It should it should exist. Like it's just a file. It should exist. Um, no such file or directory. All right, let's shot sum it again. Yep, same thing. Okay, it definitely exists, and it definitely has the right contents. So why doesn't it think it exists? Um, create subprocess exec. Maybe you are in a non-existent directory. No, nope, you exist. Um, okay. Um, and f-sync didn't help, which is also weird. Um, okay. Tempfile.name. What in the hell could be going on here? And it thinks that file is non existent. Okay, well, we'll just pull out the S trace. Have you guys used S trace? This is a helpful command. So basically, um, we're going to tell S trace that. It needs to run. It's basically going to grab all of the system calls. Uh, pick that trace, and it's going to tell us everything that that FFmpeg is doing. So we'll see it try to open the file. Um, let's see. I believe that's how we do it. Need to run as you. Okay, yeah, fine. Okay. Pseudo, do what I tell you. Okay. Uh, hold on. Cannot stat FFmpeg. Oh, because now you're no longer. Snap. Been. All right, so now we look at this file temp as or ffmpeg dot trace, and see now we get basically every single system call that it did. Yeah. Um, and so, let's see, uh, we can see... Uh, Do you know this on a regular basis? Yes. <laughs> this is a very good oh good uh, thing to do. Basically, if you, if, you, if you don't know what the hell's going on, you just, you just open up S-Trace and it will tell you exactly what's going on. Okay, LSTAT. Um, okay, snap stuff, snap stuff. Okay. Okay. Snap, 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 snap. Maybe it has to do with the snap confinement. It's very possible. Okay, exec. Snap exec. Exec, exec. Are we wrapping? Okay, it's doing a bunch of... It probably has to do with the stupid snap stuff. Open at. Nope, there it is. No such file or directory. Well, wow, what the hell? I'll be. That's ridiculous. Um, something's very wrong here. It thinks that this file doesn't exist, but it clearly exists. Um, let's see. Uh, why the hell is that happening? Um, but it works on your machine, okay. Um, 
Let's see. Let's try to download. Let's just uh, FFmpeg static builds. There's some guy who builds static builds of FFmpeg. This guy. Oh, the internet. Filled with people giving you random code to run on your computer. Um, let's see. <laughs> we can trust this guy, right? Probably? Maybe? Who knows? Yeah, that's um, why I didn't include this. Sorry, even though I installed from them, I didn't want to include that in the review. What? So I just linked that. I, I, I installed like this, but I didn't want to write that in the notes, so I just Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> Uh, it's one thing to uh, it's one thing to do it yourself. It's another thing to prescribe what 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 this is right here. Um, let's see X V Z uh, J. Uh, let's see X V J. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So let's just. I think it has to do with the stupid snap thing. Um, let's not run this one as sudo, huh? Okay. Let's see, path equals um, pwd slash static colon path, and then we'll see if it runs, hopefully it runs the right ffmpeg. Oh, I still have it running now. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's take away your S trace here. And just run. Some peg. There you go. It was a snap problem. Very nice. Alright, so that's good to know. So let's put a note. Oh, maybe we should put a note about that because this is Ubuntu and. It sounds like that's the standard way to. That was the way that it told me to install Snap on Ubuntu, so which means a lot of people are going to run into that. <laughs> so we should put a yeah, note about yeah. that. Um, something about. Uh, this is another wonderful thing about open source software. Is even though it's not your bug, you get to work around it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe let's put a note. So let's see. Put a note below this line. So. Below this line, let's put a note or a warning about how uh, snap install ffmpeg uh, about how we've noticed that snap install ffmpeg did not work. Okay. So install from somewhere else or something. Okay, I'm glad we got that one. Uh, okay, so and now we've got the Docker file, so deploying on Docker container. Oh, okay, so let's see. Um, that, one more. that explains this won't work well, I'm going to modify it. Um, so let's see. So this explains why because I noticed that when we go here, you see deploying with the HTTP service and then deploying on Docker container. Um, but this is in the same document. So I was wondering why is that? Why is this showing up at the same header level as the other document? Um, but maybe it makes sense. It probably does make sense to keep it there, but let's definitely capitalize um, Docker and container, even though it's not like, there's yeah, kind of like no I rhyme or reason, but at least it fits with the rest of them. Um, so let's see, GitHub, what code? let's capitalize Docker, I think is what we need to do. So. Hey, sorry about that, by the way. I know you fixed a lot of capitalization. No worries, no worries. Let's just say, actually, we can even just say, let's just say deploying via container and then fix that underline as well. Or right, let me just do. Yeah, this is, let's see then. It just, just how it goes. It's hard to catch all these things yourself. I know when I write, this is, and this is why the tutorials that I've written are, like, not, not the greatest because I didn't, I didn't, like, you guys have gone through them a few times and we've had some some review of them, but that's just there was not not much review of those. Um, let's see, I tried to get other people too, but they sort of did it half acidly. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so, and then we need a, a space here. Let me just do this while I'm at it. Um, okay, so... It's playing on Docker container. Let's jump back to here. Okay. And then... Oh, and then I think I put comments, but anywhere there's Augens, Augens how we need to uh, change that to just user. Uh, just so that they yeah, know that it's... Uh, I may not have pulled down. Let's see. It looks like it's a literal include, so I may not have made a comment on it. Or let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. No, it's marked as resolved, but I'm not seeing it as actually changed here. Oh, so, okay, okay. Let's see. Let's. I'll refresh the page, though. Because um, I know I put some things, and I think you may have done it yeah, in between yeah. when I did yeah. this. Uh, let's just make sure. Okay, GitHub, come on. Yeah, uh, I changed it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, let's do that. Um. Okay. Back to tutorial. Okay. So, and now we're looking at so vim Docker file. Okay. Yeah, and mine says. Because, yeah, mine will say mine username, yours will say your yeah. username. Oh, I think you probably grabbed this one and we forgot. I forgot to make another comment for this one. All right, oh, okay, so okay, okay. Yeah. let's uh, see. List it. sources. Okay. Um, and we probably also want to change this curl command to the example usage one. Um, so let's let's just make a note in here. Um, uh, change Docker file commands. To have user uh, as username and um, let's see and what was the other one? Oh, uh, modify or update update curl command. Okay. Um. So okay. So yeah, we install, install, install. Um. Okay, let me just copy paste that whole shebang there, so we end up with the exact same thing. Um, uh, by the way, it won't work now because it doesn't have the updated HTTP service. Yeah. Okay. So let's just do CPR documents Python diff mouse service HTTP um, HTTP service um, and then Docker file and then we can just do. Um, user SRC HTTP. Okay, there we go. So now we should have the updated HTTP service, and hopefully that will give us the right stuff. Oh, and it looks like we might have some spacing issues in here. Um, is that in, also in scale? It might also be in scale. So wherever that is, whether it's in scale or here, we'll need to fix both of them. Um, it looks like there were lacking spaces in here. So like, so lacking spaces in command, possibly also in scale. Okay. Um, and now run this command, execute container after receiving your webhooks. So make sure you, okay, to run the container content, we use the right so make sure you change it to your use case. Plus tutorial, we would change it to dot dot. All right, great. Tagged, great. Okay. Container sent a post request. Okay, so build. And I'm on the machine where I actually have Docker. Yay. Oh, thank God this has some fast internet. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Like, yeah. It's so our uplink at, at the this is a this is a machine at the this, this I love this thing and I got access to this thing or well someone put this in a lab that I was in and I quickly just was like put it in a put it in a no ever everybody forgot about it after a while and then I put it in another lab and I'm like everybody can use this but no one else does use it so I've got these nice 32 cores and 126 gigs of RAM oh, nice. it's like they've got they've, they always have these extra machines because you know we'll 
we've got like these uh, these pre-production machines, and uh, like they don't work all the way sometimes, right? Because they're sort of like working on the hardware, and then and then they're like, oh, okay, well, like you know, we're not gonna we can't use this for anything else, and we have to throw it away. So then they'll be like, okay, like you guys can have this machine, you guys can have that machine, and so that's how we ended up with this machine on my team, I believe. So that's a that's lucky. Um, let's see. Especially now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do. Uh, I had this thing doing kernel builds. I mounted a RAM disk because um, it's got like 120, 27 gigabytes of RAM. So I mounted, I made a RAM disk and then put the whole kernel source tree in the RAM disk and then ran the kernel compile and it goes in like five minutes. It can compile the whole thing. That's it's nice. great. I know. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. I was telling my my coworker, who the one who had the whole VIM setup and everything, I was like, man, you should just like he's already SSH into his machine. I was like, you should just do it on there. But um, he was he was a little bit uh, he was a little bit unsure if he wanted to be on the same machine that I also have uh, root privileges on. Um, so in case I because I, I have a tendency to to make things fall over sometimes. Uh, Let's see. Okay, so we're almost done here. Um, and hopefully that uh, hopefully that HTTP command goes correctly because or else or no, this is all apt-get. So. Oh, I think I forgot the dash u. I may have to actually modify that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I forgot the dash U here. That's okay, we won't have to redo this giant thing, so that's good. Alright, okay. Oh wait, actually, okay, looks like I copied. All this and we saw HTTP. All right, okay. So now we have this. We should have the updated version of the HTTP container. So now we do the Docker run. Good. We've got log debug. Uh oh, oh dash d. Docker log dash f. Um, okay, and it looks like we've got two different sections for this command. So. Um, Let's maybe combine that into one console thing. So, can import name op from df. Oh, we've also got the old, uh, the old style the FFML. So we need to make sure that that. All right, let's do. Run the build again. Uh, Docker stop. Okay, and let's so let's just do just because the other one, you know, we're not backgrounding HTTP service when we've started that. Um, let's just not background this Docker command because. So, let's see, operations deploy, oh, okay, so is that what happened here, let's see, okay, RMTI, okay, 
da, 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 da. Okay, so let's not use dash D anywhere. Um, so what we could do is we should probably tell people, let's see. Mm, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, so I'm just thinking about, like, if we have this thing at auto-redeploy stuff, right? So that the, the, the command at the top of the Docker file is showing people, you know, how would, how would you run this thing if you wanted to just run it, right? Um, it's really, it, it's, it's meant as a comment, right? And as instructions for us to parse. But when we run it with that Docker deploy hook, um, like with the webhook stuff, we probably want to insert the daemon flag, and we probably want to insert restart equals always, um, because we probably want this to like you know you know if it goes down we want it to if the server goes down it's we want it to come back up. Kind of, uh, so okay, sorry. Um, we probably want to let me make a note here. We probably want to have the operations um, the operations which restart the container add in dash d and dash dash restart equals always um, because in this instance we're just like showing sort of how to run it and in the other one we're actually trying to keep it running all the time right and in the background um, so, I don't, I think, I think, let's see, I, yeah, I think we should probably hold off, like, we probably should, should remove the instance of, of the daemon flag here, um, and then we want to have it so that the operations themselves, when you do the operations, and then we probably want to, when you do the operations, have them basically insert it, like, after run, um, Okay. Let's see. Um, and then we want to get rid of like these lines here, so that we have one. Or well, this is, and then you'd say like now in another window or something. So. So, let's see. Uh, what is this blank line? So blank line. Blank line. Blank line. Okay. They want to do D, they can. If not, they just do it in another terminal. Um, but this way, they can see the logs. Okay, so okay, run the build. Oh, it's FMPEG. I was like, wow, Python with the development headers and then like AIOHDP in our library ends up as a gigabyte in Ubuntu? That doesn't make any sense, but it's FFMPEG. That will give you a gigabyte image, that's for sure. Okay. I guess I just copied back twice. I didn't need to do that. Again. again nice okay let's and then 90-90 and let's check this gif hey look at that yeah. nice nice good job Okay, let's see. And now we're gonna go to re Facebook. redeploying. <laughs> what? Facebook, that it works. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, sweet. All right, now we're saying, okay, deploy and feature git. Okay, so let's do... Okay. Um, so... Documents, Python, DFML, operations, deploy. And let's just make sure to get it installed. Documents, Python, DFML, feature git. Yeah, we really got to change those to operations deploy, or operations git at some point. Ooh, my laptop battery's running low. All right, let's do this. I'm sorry, guys, we're way over time now. Um, let's see. Okay. Um... And then cat operations. And then create the data flow. Oh, and also again, that's once again, we need config YAML. So let's add that to the top of this. Um, so let's see. And then, let's see. Okay, we're going to do this guy there. So, and now we're deploying. Okay, deploy webhook. Big deploy webhook. Okay, and in this one, in the other one we did, when we start the MC config, it's in deploy. Okay, I see what you did here. Nice. Um, okay. Default service. service config. Oops, let me just uh, lock debug. Okay. Um, oh, nice. Put them both in the same note. That's probably better. Okay. Make sure this is up and running. Error 404, not found. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and now, uh oh, it looks like we've got a double, a double thing here. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's just remove this guy and just leave this. Um, let's see. Oops, oops, oops. What happened there? Okay. GitHub. Uh, so let's indent this guy. Okay, and then let's we can screenshot this and have a little screenshot of the localhost run thing. Uh, so, so, and then let's remove this. So, let's move this uh, since it's a repeat. Um, and then let's add. Uh, da -da. Okay, and then image. Images. Call host run PNG. And I think, okay, sweet, nice. Get a good screenshot there. Get a screenshot there. Okay, that'll be good. All right, good job with the 
this. This is important. Okay, so let's now go create a git repo, github.com. This is like, oh, this is very cool. Okay. What do I need to do? I need to do. I need to make it smaller, apparently. New project. Name. Test. Public. Oh, wait, no, not new project, damn it. Set it webhooks. So. Get in it. Get at a. Oh crap! We added FFmpeg. Uh, okay, pick. Also, uh, what is your user variable evaluate to? Uh, it's going to be, uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what? What'd you say? Uh, your user variable. Uh, you use that uh, command to build the container, right? So it will grab the username from your GitHub repo. Oh, we'll grab the username from the GitHub repo? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And let's see. Um, yeah, username slash repo. Yeah, my username is going to be different here. So let's see. Let's see what it is. Um, It'll be fine if you just change the Docker file. Comments yeah. Okay. Um, it'll be fine if we change the doc file. Okay, let's do that. Um, um, okay. Um, yeah, and I just cat it in from that file. So why? Let's see, I cut it in from that file. So it's going to show their username. Okay, once we change that. And uh, let's see. Can we also change this screenshot? I'm sorry, I'm going to be really nitpicky, but if I ever do anything that's slightly off, I get shit from people. So this needs to be HTTPS. Just make sure that the URL says HTTP. Actually, oh. I can just take a screenshot right now because uh, I'm about yes. to do this. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, also, uh, the, the, it will be tagged in the repo name. Oh, it I think that doesn't matter. Yeah, so. okay, so let's see. Get status, get add A. Let's see, initial commit. Okay. Okay, here we go. Great. And now, we need webhooks. And what was the local host run URL? Okay, add webhook. Um, okay, and JSON, right? Oh, and eventually we'll want to do secret. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Snipping tool. So let's make a. Uh, here. Let's just do. Uh, enable. Yeah, we want to make sure it's enabled. Okay. 
so let's see. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. Now I got all confused with all the tabs being different sizes. Okay. Oh, and this is apparently just completely off now. Okay, so. Alright, so we need to show HTTPS. Well, it's not, honestly, it doesn't even matter if we don't have the secret, so that's the problem. Okay, so we need to open an issue f to make sure that we support having this, having this only happen with a secret. Um, we'll need to add another or so like add some operation that verifies verifies the that secret equals equals what it's supposed to be uh, and we'll set it via a uh, at config for the operation. Um, okay. Secret. Okay. Um, yeah. And then make some, and then make it output a a bool which we can use as a condition. Um, so this is important. Uh, let me just like open an issue real quick. Um, uh, so let's see, what is this? Uh, operations deploy uh, support secret for web hook all right there we go all right and then let's see let's finish this out all right, okay now we need to make a change to the repo okay so this is rating here um and it's going it should deploy the container and uh, we're done set it for push events and you change that let's see oh yeah Possible. i hadn't just push events okay yeah i hadn't i hadn't done it yet okay. thank you um uh what's wrong let's see last delivery was not successful Oh, oh, I didn't put the uh, slash. So what is it? It's um, slash GitHub. Slash okay. okay, so yeah, this looks like we have an inconsistent here. So this says slash GitHub in the screenshot. And the URL we need to put is slash webhook slash GitHub. So, recent deliveries. Redeliver. Okay, response 503. No SSH tunnel here. Did I close that? Oh, I did close it, didn't I? Okay. So we need to make sure that we have the right thing on there. So maybe I will just take a screenshot. Uh, okay, so. Okay. So, yeah, here, I'll just do the screenshot again, and we can have the... Da, da, da. Okay. So... like the URL is off. Uh, replace like this. Okay. okay. I'm glad we saw that. Um, okay. And 
now. Let's see, let's re-trigger that. So re-deliver. Did I put in the right URL? Let's see. Okay, not found. This is HTTPS update. Maybe I didn't hit update. Yeah, I probably didn't hit update. Let's do redeliver. So redeliver. All right, looks promising. Response 500 internal server. Okay, let's see. Unknown uh, or key error ref. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see. I guess we'll just leave this as an issue for now. Then let's see. Um, let's see if I can. Is there a ref in here? I don't know. Let's see if I can. Uh, let me just dump this stuff to. Uh, dump this. I'll dump this log here. To okay, I'll dump this log into the into the uh, PR, and then uh, ooh, let's see. I learned this cool thing the other day, so um, this is fun. It's just like a handy little thing, but basically you can just like put echo and then. HTTP uh, slash 1.0 200 OK, and then uh, and then whatever you want to be served over an HTTP port because right now I, I can't copy paste back and forth here, so this is like how I'm gonna do this. Um, so log if you don't if you don't have uh, here, let's see wait not that okay. So it just it'll just dump everything to you because it'll see a valid HTTP header. All right, okay. So this was a long, long meeting, um, uh, but we were almost there. We were very close. Um, yes. I guess if you want to go figure this out, then we I will be. That again. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you for going through all of this. This has been. I know it's been a. It's been a long pull request, um, and uh, and hopefully we'll we'll have yeah, it all done fun. here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a very cool thing. I mean, we're basically we. I mean, this is just basically you write any code, and now it's automatically redeployed wherever you want to access it at. So that is very sweet. Um, so all the stuff that we've been working on, we can now just like take it and like whenever we want to show somebody something, we can be like, oh, okay, look at the Git repo, and this is the the server that's always up to date with that Git repo. So it's nice for for showing showing everyone what we've been working on. Cool, uh, and for them redeploying their stuff. All right, well, thanks, guys. Uh, I don't know who all stayed on till the end here, but if you did, then uh, you saw some cool stuff. So, all right, uh, see you guys, and uh, have a good uh, have a good week, and I'll talk to you all on Gitter and on uh, Friday. So, thanks, everyone. Bye.